Hello and welcome to Glimmer of Genius, episode 25. This is a podcast all about Magic the Gathering, bringing you all the latest tournament reports, news, deck ideas and more. Unfortunately, this week there was a major issue with the recording and I'm unable to edit it properly. So rather than bring you nothing, what we are bringing you this week is an unedited raw version of episode 25. Grant and I go over GP Birmingham and we talk about how to build a queue. This episode is a bit longer than what we would normally like the show to be and contains a lot more what I would call raw footage. So I apologise greatly for this, but unfortunately due to the technical issues that I have been facing, I've been unable to get around that. And as I mentioned, rather than have no episode, I thought it best to have at least something this week. So apologies once again, this is far below the normal quality that we would normally like to put out for you. However, there was very little I could do this week. I can't stress enough that the quality of this episode is not the benchmark for our usual standards, so please do stick with it. And next week, with any luck, we will be back on a regular form. Hello. Hi. Yes. Yeah, I can't complain. It's a nice day. Uh, I've only been vomited on once today. That's good. <laughs> I shouldn't buy it by your offspring. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's a good clarification. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's good. She caught me by surprise, though, to be fair. I got her all dressed up. Laura's taken her out to see her, her stepmom. And yeah. literally, I, ter- I turned my head to the side just to sort out something with a car seat. And I'm, li- I'm like, why is my hand warm? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. All over the outfit. I ain't changing you again. <laughs> Uh, anyway, oh, so um, did you go to GP Birmingham? No, I went to Portugal to see Eurovision instead. <laughs> you actually went to Portugal? <laughs> yeah, I was. I, oh, wow. I got back from Lisbon literally this morning. Jesus, I didn't. I, sorry, I, I was a bit slow there. I, I knew you'd watched it. I didn't realize you'd actually gone all the way to bloody see it. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, was like, oh, I've got tickets to Eurovision. Do you want to come with me? This is like four months ago or something. I was like, yeah, why not? I don't go on holiday very much. So yeah, I just went. Used it as an excuse to go to Lisbon and also apparently go to the Eurovision. <laughs> wow. Yeah, how, it's been fun. How long were you over there for? Um, uh, I went there Thursday and got back. Uh, what well, was supposed to be late last night, but ended up, I didn't get home until about quarter to two, which, given my alarm goes for six, hence why I'm kind of tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, fair enough. <clears throat> so, did you get to see much of, of Lisbon around when you were there, I take it? Yeah, um, I've, I've been to Lisbon once before, um, and we went to kind of like a different part of it, uh, and that was fun. Uh, I don't think I've ever been offered cocaine more times than in my life than when I was walking around Lisbon this weekend. Really? Literally, I think, if you walked around in the evening, it was probably like every 20th person offered you cocaine. Wow. <laughs> obviously, obviously all fake, but still. Um, oh, right. Yes, that was, uh, that, was, that was a fun experience. <laughs> so are they... Are they- are they targeting you because you're a tourist and they think they can just get to sell you um, pretend drugs yes. and then you just, that's it? Yes, but also um, drugs are decriminalised over there. So you can't legally sell it. But if you're caught with a personal supply of drugs on, there's no penalty whatsoever or there's like a small fine or something. Um, okay. So it's not as risky like selling drugs at there as it is to say compared to here. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Fun fact. <laughs> no, I, I I had no idea that was um that was a thing over there. I, I would not have been expecting that wandering like wandering around and then that happening all. Yeah. Like, yeah. We've all been there, uh, you know, wander into a pub toilet. Someone asks <laughs> if you got any weed. You know, yeah. That happens occasionally, but yeah. But yeah, no. Okay. Normally, it's um when you go to places um people selling you little keychains or, or souvenirs of like of, of stuff not do you want any cocaine that's great yeah exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> if I ever find myself in Lisbon with Laura I'm I'm not going to tell her the bit about it being decriminalised and it happens a lot yeah I'll just be like pretty good idea yeah I'll just be like oh my god <laughs> oh man it's offering us we should buy some just to be polite <laughs> And then make her worried about having them on her the whole time. Yeah. Oh. Okay, there you go. So what um, I'm thinking of for today is um, just browse a little bit over the the GP um, that happened. 
but also um, if you're okay with doing so is maybe chat a little bit about cube building because I know you've talked about yeah. cube before but yeah I'm thinking maybe more from an actual like if anyone wants to build their own cube that sort of thing um, yeah that's cool. and, and then just kind of keep it with that because I reckon between those two things we'll probably have a good chunk of stuff there um, yeah if you're happy with that yeah that's cool awesome okay then so I'll probably do an intro a bit later on. Um, I myself haven't done much in the way of magic uh, this week because I've been preparing um, for a different tournament uh, for for Warhammer, uh, a big Warhammer tournament. Oh, that'd be saying, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's happening. The guy who's doing it, incidentally, it's a bit off topic, but he's posted up this little vlog of him building the terrain, yeah. and he's wanted to basically provide a certain level of terrain. Um, okay. And he's only started building it seven days ago. <laughs> and wow. yeah, it's the biggest, it's the biggest um, Warhammer event in the country. And yeah. he's just, he's just putting up these vlogs of his back garden just full of foam. <laughs> and he's like, "Yep, I'm fed up cutting up bits of foam now. Um, and now I'm fed up cutting up, gluing the bits of foam." And I'm just like, "You're mental." Like, it was like um, when I when I was probably into Warhammer when I was younger. Um, although obviously I'm trying to get back into it now. When I went to the you know the game day thing in um, was it Birmingham, I think, um, and it was when uh, Lord of the Rings Warhammer had just come out, oh, yeah. and at one of the obviously at this convention they had a like a segment. I think is probably the best way to describe it of Minas Tirith. So they had a like a Warhammer scale, like you know eighth uh, of Minas Tirith. So it was, it was still like a, a good twenty or thirty foot tall. Um, but all the models in it obviously were scaled to the, the streets and the archways and stuff. I mean, that's terrific. It's so cool. That is, yeah. Stuff like that's that when you see it all kind of together, and especially when they put models on it as well, not just the scenery, like all kind of coming together a bit. It, it, yeah. That was the that was the biggest piece of scenery I've seen until I went to Warhammer World, um, yeah. and there's a diorama there that's like absolutely just ridiculous. I don't know if you've been to Warhammer World before. I have. Which one? Because they've got quite the, a few. The, the double floor one, uh, where it's got oh, like, Ultramarines versus um, it's got Chaos Space Marines and also Chaos. Yeah. Uh, I was just, you know, it's more the obviously the models, the actual terrain is like, you know, good. But mm. the, it's, it's all the models, it's all the, the flyers, it's all the demons crawling up the side, yeah. the explosion and stuff. It's just so, so well done. Yeah, you just, you, you stare at it for about 10 minutes and you're still finding little stories yeah. and things in it. Yeah, they really do go to town. Um, yeah. They've done a new table as well, um, that's recently, uh, a Fallen Titan. Um, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I think it's a Warhound Titan or something. They're basically just, they've got a couple of um, car, um, miscasts from Forge World. Yeah. Because uh, obviously they can just pop next door and be like, yeah. you got any spare Titans lying around? And they go, yes. It's during that, <laughs> during that bin over there. And uh, they just built a table out of it. Um, and obviously you wouldn't know to look at it. Um, and it looks, it looks amazing, just like, this like ruined um war machine just like all over the thing and yeah it's really good um but anyway before we get too distracted um have you before we get into gp birmingham have you been up to much playing magic at all have you um i can't remember if we spoke about it last time was it uh last time we did it was i saying about i was going to draft with my cousins i think i said yes yeah so they they um <clears throat> they had a really good time. Um, they were like straight up, uh, straight away after. They were like, "Oh, when is this?" It's like every every Friday. <laughs> like, oh my god, let's do it every week. I'm like, oh, I probably won't, but you you guys can if you want. Um, but yeah, so they they properly enjoyed Dominaria, and because it was like the Dominaria release one, and it was like literally. Well, actually, were you you weren't at that one, were you? No, I missed it. I've 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 been a bit bit rubbish on the uh, magic events at the moment. I mean, I, I am as well, to be fair, but there was just like loads of people I hadn't seen for, for ages. Um, but yeah, there, was, there, there was about four uh, four tables, um, and uh, Matt was there as well, so I'm pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And it was a ridiculous situation where the whole room had like, I think it was four or five judges, I think. Um, but unfortunately, like two of the, so I had um, my cousin, uh, one of our friends from school, and then his girlfriend. And, and unfortunately, like on two of the tables they were on, there were no judges. But then the one I was on had like three. No. So we probably should have cussed and did it, whatever. Um, 
so, so that was really fun. Uh, Dominar is just quite fun to draft. Uh, you make some really weird decks. Like I made like a, it was technically blue white, but then like almost half of the cards were colourless. It's just really weird stuff like that. Um, mm. And then you know they had a good time like playing properly some sort of for once rather than just you know at home, Missing which I remember is you know a really good experience because I remember do, doing that for the first time like four or five years ago. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, when was it? Was it the next day or the day after? Yeah, the, was it the Sunday I had the PPTQ to run um, for Dice Loon, and that went really well. We only got um, 16 people, uh, and Simon was one of the people that played, and indeed, obviously, won it, which was um, uh, unexpected for lots of different people. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we played that, and then we also did, almost like GP style, uh, we sort of also fired like some drafting pods as we went, uh, which was a bit challenging because I was kind of doing, I had to like get results while I was also doing like a time draft with someone. That's all. Um, and normally I'd be like, Simon, can you help? But unfortunately he was in the top eight. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But no, so that was good. So we got like, uh, what, three pods, I think it was, of people playing um, throughout, you know, the hours of when the GP was still going on, kind of, when the PPTQ rather was still going on. Um, so I haven't really been doing too much magic wise, but I've been in some, some nice little, um, popular events at Dice Day That's awesome. Um, what else? But yeah, also, you know, jokes aside, um, Simon built some, or drafted particularly, um, some rather ridiculous situations. Um, like he was combined, like he did like a four colour, the, the, the deck he won with, you know, obviously the drafted one was like a four colour nonsense thing. Oh yeah. Uh, and it was just very, very nice little tricks and stuff. And then, um, one of the sealed, uh, pulls someone had, not Simon. Um, they opened a Teferi, no, a foil Teferi and a, a is it Jaya with the red planeswalker? Uh-huh. Uh huh. And also the legendary sorcery that goes with her. Wow. Um, so I don't think uh, Nick really minded not making top eight because no. well, with Teferi and the rest. So uh, yeah, so it was good. It was um, a real sort of positive atmosphere. It's the first time I've, I've done a event at Dice Lane since they've moved. And it was just super good. It was just like nice having a proper event. We had some drafting at the back, some people on the side doing, you know, board games and stuff. There were pieces coming out. It was good. It was a nice little, nice little atmosphere. Mm. So right. um, I'm looking forward to, to either playing or judging there again, to be honest, because it's nice. Yeah, they're going from strength to strength, I think. Um, yes. Especially with the, the new store, uh, just giving them so much more. Um, yeah, yeah, it's crazy big. It is good. Um, forget how it winds about around the back as well. Sometimes you're kind of going. I know. Like, oh, I can hear people doing. Oh, okay. It just goes well, on. One of the rooms is one of the rooms is shut, man, isn't it? Because it's full of loads of junk that to get rid of. So yeah. like, it's only like two thirds or three quarters at least, like done at the moment. In? What was it they put in there? They said they were going to do something with it. I can't remember. Um. Oh, was it like uh, like for custom like D and D sessions or like uh, uh. sort of like role play stuff? Like you'd have sections which had like doors to them so that you know you could be noisy and stuff and That's whatever cool. mm. that'd be good to yeah. see yeah yeah okay then so this last weekend just gone there was uh, a gp in our back garden and um in top form none of us went but um <laughs> it seems to be um pretty much uh, a bit of a not a repeat but thinking about the scg open that happened recently and this sort of resurgence of these black red aggressive yeah. vehicle lists um they're all over the top eight again i think we've got four no was it five so there's one two three four five yeah, five, yeah. six no it's six because the only other two decks, no, that's six, I'll, I'll double count one. Uh, the only other two decks in there was a blue white control and black green constrictor. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, and I won't talk too much on the black red vehicles list because realistically, the numbers between them are very, very similar, unsurprisingly. <laughs> yeah. um, I think the biggest things it comes down to are. The number of magma sprays versus cut to ribbons, oh, yeah. um, and you've also got a couple of people playing um, Glory Bringer as well yeah. in the main versus the side. 
Um, chain whirler, goblin chain whirler seems to be a four mm. of in most of them, if not all of them. Right. Um, which is again in my mind, kind of really solidifying this as a mono red deck that just splashes black for a few key pieces. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, which is which ha how I I had when I was toying tinkering with the version of it. That's how I'd kind of done it. And it's interesting yeah. to see. Um, that's just kind of how it seems to be shaping out. Um, yeah. The only black is cut ribbons, which te technically you don't even need black to play in the first place. And then Scrap Bridge Ground, which you also don't need black to play. Yep. And then you've just got an unlicensed integration. Yep. Um, is the only actual black thing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, worst case scenario, I mean, I, I had games, because I, I was toying with a greedy version before the bannings um, <laughs> with deserts. So I had four um, of the colourless deserts. It's basically ramming up red, um, but splashing black. So it was kind of this but with desert theme as well um why why desert uh because ramen at ruins was was so good and oh i see oh, okay it's before that yeah yeah sure. yeah so it's before the banners it's a little while ago now and also it gave me sideboard access this is when team was really good and you needed ways to interact in the mid game and mm -hmm. um i would sideboard into the sand strangler card yeah like um that. which was really good against um against team um but yeah but anyway uh so yeah, the, I had I had you know you have a, some percentage of games where you need black and you haven't got it, and it's nice that unlicensed disintegration is the only card that you can't cast. Um, yeah. Uh, for that, I mean, yeah, it's unlucky. I always seem to whenever I got cut off black, I always would draw just like multiple unlicensed disintegrations. <laughs> yeah. Um, but them's the breaks. Um, um, the one that surprised me was Khan. Now, when Khan came out, I was like, oh, it's great, like, cheap planes walk already, how low is it? And I didn't really think he did very much, particularly, like, his ultimate. Hmm. And people were like, oh, this is going to be really good. And I'm like, mm, I don't really see it seeing much play. Like, maybe it goes into, like, a control deck, and maybe, like, it goes into modern because it's, like, a colourless thing, and it does, you know, generic good card draw stuff. But I think what I hadn't factored into my head was, I was like, oh, okay, card draw. That goes into like a control deck, but what I hadn't factored into account was the fact that it's colourless, so it can go to anything. Yeah. And therefore, it goes really well in like an aggro deck where you you're not can't, you're not drawing cards for an advantage; you're drawing cards just to keep going. Um, so that's actually surprised me that he, he is being played in in standard. Um, because of that. Well, just just imagine a fairly a fairly common sequence with a deck like the red black as well. Um, yeah. Turn one, Bowman Courier. Turn two, Heart of Kieran. Turn three, scrap heaps scrounger. Yeah. Crew heart swing. Turn four, Khan. Make a dude, which is now a four four. And you yeah, can... yeah, yeah, true. And you can either use and because he's on five loyalty, you could then be really greedy and crew with Khan. Yeah. And he's still sitting there at two. Sorry. And also, you've got a four four minus... Sorry, the minus making an artifact as well. You can even do that if you just go, oh, I've got a nice integration, but I've got any artifacts. Like, that's super just useful. Yeah. Yeah. Because the um, the three damage, when you don't get it, it, it you really feel it. Yeah. <laughs> um, because you kind of, even though you play it and think, okay, that three damage is just gravy, obviously a deck like this is is wanting to do the damage and get that little bit of, of extra points of, of damage through if it can. So if you're, you know, you, you you've got these situations where you you really want that three damage to, to kind of be hitting through because you want to push some sort of um, tempo advantage just 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 to kill your opponent. So if you don't get it, then it's really rough. So another way of getting that is you're absolutely right. I think it's really good, um, which is why I think we're seeing the lean towards the the Ballista and PNLR as well. So you've got all these little little ways of of getting the um, the artifacts in there, which is good. I mean, it makes sense. Um, it's it's kind of I always like this deck, uh, just sort of red black in combination, just because it's like a nice integration is just really good. Um, but look at these top eight decks. I definitely would want to play the red black deck, but again, as someone that's sort of you know, I sold my heart of Karans, uh, I don't want to buy cards that kind of thing. Um, I just I want to play it, but it's just way too expensive kind of thing, and mm. there's not. It's not like say. You know, how many months ago where you had a bit more of a variance in the top eight? Obviously, it probably will get a bit more varied as stuff goes along. But I'm kind of looking for some kind of uh, cheap, like okay deck that's just a bit fun to play with. I think, and I think I'm, if I want to do that, I'm gonna either end up not playing standard for a bit, 
all go back to Godfrey's gift, which wasn't too bad, I don't think. But then still, I need to get four of those um, red uh, mythic guys, the combat celebrant, or whatever it's called. Sorry, say that again. You went a bit funny. Um, if I wanted to do Godfrey's gift again, um, the lists that seem to be good seem to run four copies of that combat celebrant. Oh, um, combat celebrant, yes. Which I think is, uh, since Godfrey's gift did actually see some play, um, I think he's probably going to go up a bit. Um, so yeah. it's not like I can just play what I'm already playing. I don't think I could easily replace him as much. So I don't no. know. Again, that looks a little bit expensive either way, unfortunately. It's frustrating because the red the red Griff deck we saw last week mm-hmm. was looked really good and really fun. Um, yeah. But for the, exactly what you just said, it's it's a bit like oh, you're having to get the the four celebrants. The rest you could really piece together quite cheaply. But but that guy kind of like I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't really know what to do with this format because it seems like unless you're, because again our license integration is just super good, uh, you just seem to need to have either Teferi to play control or Khan and Hark around to do something else mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. Well, and I just I just want something that isn't as expensive but still can take these on. Well, green black. Um, it's true. Vraska is a one of this expensive mythic, but the rest of it isn't terrible. There's a lot of commons and uncommons here. You've got Thrashing Brontodon. What are, um... Oh. Oh. Why doesn't it run, um... What's her face? The double explorer? Pass. I, I, I swear mana. all of the constricted decks we used to run her. Because that's why I didn't want to get into it. Because I, um... I didn't have any of those. I had everything else. Oh, that's not too bad. I might be able to play this now. I, I think that card's good. However, I think Ravenous Chupacabra is probably better. And really? Even though it can go mental. Well, is it Jade Light, Jade Light Ranger, is it? Yeah, Jade Light Ranger. So you need. See, my my issue with um when I saw the explore stuff with um Winding Constrictor is so Winding Constrictor is like the force multiplier of this deck. Sure. Now that needs to be that needs to have not died. So you need to have a drawn that card. And B, it needs to have not eaten a fatal push or any other kind of removal spell for you then to kind of really kind of get value out of it. So then adding another variable in the the explore might just whiff, and you might end up with a an irrelevant creature. Yes, you've drawn two lands, but at the point you've you know you're impacting the board, you play what is it two two? Yeah. Um. So you've got your whiny constrictor. It hasn't died. You play your guy. And then it doesn't get the encounters that you want. You'd just be a bit sad. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. Um, whereas Chupacabra, you play it, it kills something. Um, have you seen the... I think I can't remember this is for another podcast. Um, have you seen the official card ruling that's on Oracle around Jade Light Ranger? No, what's the... Um, so you've got all the normal stuff like... Um, if no card is revealed, most likely because the player's library is empty, doesn't get one card, all the kind of stuff that goes with Explore. Um... <laughs> But it's it's unique rolling at the top, which I can't believe is not like a for an unstable card. Is uh, if you reveal a non-land card for the first time, Jade Light Ranger explores and leave it on top of your library, you will obviously reveal the same card the second time it explores. If you don't pretend to be su- surprised, you will hurt Jade Light Ranger's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> like, feel free to go on whatever either Oracle or whatever app you're using on your phone. That is the first ruling. Uh, it literally says that, which is amazing. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> if you don't pretend to be surprised, you will hurt Jade Light Ranger's feelings. <laughs> oh, <brilliant>. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you, you, could t- you could totally play this deck. I'm looking at it. I mean, the Vrask Contempt is only playing a couple of those. Um, I've got to. Yeah, this thing, I want to go off what I have, and I do have these cards, so this is actually doable. Adventurous Impulse. The only other thing that I was planning on playing um, uh, what was it? I had that black white vampire tribal deck, which is fine because it, it can go big and wide quite quickly because of all the, the um, enchantments and lords and stuff make them big. Yeah. Um, but I feel like not obviously it's not as good as you'd expect because you are likely to have something an anthem in play. But I feel like the chain whirlers are just going to screw me over. So I feel like I think I might not have to, you know, I might not want to play that deck anymore. <laughs> Because if they're everywhere, that seems to hate on tokens a lot. <laughs> yeah, Chain, chain Whirler. Because I'm looking at Glint Sleeve Siphoner in this deck as well, and you kind of feel like 
if they go first, he's a bit of a liability. He just does nothing. Yeah. Yeah, he um, keeps loose eyes now. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've got any of those. Are they, are they still pricey? I think they're probably fairly, you know, average. It might be about four or five quid, something like that. Maybe maybe less. Um, I don't think it's going to be earth shattering. They are. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, they are one fifty. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Snap them up. I mean, what's that? Yeah. Cool. Okay, that's that's what I'm playing now. Apparently, green black yeah. stripper. Yeah. Get my dice out. Also, I like that this has Thrash and Bond stuff because Thrash and Bond stuff when it came out, I was like, this is amazing. Yep. This is just value all over the place. Yep. If you're playing green, just main deck as many of these you can because they're great. And I think it was it wasn't until like the last yeah it wasn't until is it the GP before this or GP before that you even saw any of them in people's sideboards and I'm glad that this is main deck because I'm just like it's it's always good. Particularly in a format where artifacts are now super common. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, without sounding too arrogant, you know, you've been playing Magic for a significant amount of time. When you you, you see a card like that, and you just immediately know it's good, and yeah, you don't even really need to have anyone explain why. You just think that that is an awesome card. I mean, it's aggressively costed as well for its stats. Yeah, um, exactly. For a That's start. What I like about that. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm quite glad he's getting his, his moment in the sun. And it kind of, it's kind of, you've got to expect it. I mean, if you're seeing this many um, red black vehicle decks, then people are going to have that sort of pre board um, tech because why wouldn't you? Like, yeah. And also, you get the great thing about him is he's not even, it's not even a case of, oh, I'm just going to react to um, red black vehicles. You just go, okay, this is the way the format's going. Um, I'll stick four of them in because not only is it good against red black vehicles, but if we just have a little look at the blue white control deck, um, oh, in the top eight, yep, yeah, playing eight main deck enchantment spells, yeah, and yeah, six of those are the removal spells. So, um, if they you're basically telling them they've got to use those removal spells on him or he's going to kill whatever. <laughs> Whatever you whatever you've killed. Um, obviously yeah. they're playing plenty of other removal in the form of like disallow, essence scatter. Um, why am I sitting settle? Yeah, settle the wreckage. For a second there, I thought they weren't playing settle the wreckage. And I was a bit <laughs> a bit confused. Yeah, and all the wrath effects. Um, nice. So yeah, um, you get a, you get a bit of a bonus against decks like that. And also, um, this guy's not playing it in the main, but um, history of Benalia, which. You can't tell me that's not going to continue to see play. Um, and also Godfarer's Gift as well. So yeah. it, it hits quite a significant amount of stuff um, that I think is fine. And even in the mirror match, if you're playing like this green-black deck and you're going, right, okay, I've got my brand Bronzodons. In the mirrors, you've got ways to kill Ballista and Gearhawks. So yes, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it it's, seems um, pretty good. It's, it's with, uh, with decks like these, it, it, I'm glad that you flagged this one up because... Again, if I can't play something silly, um, I, I like at least playing something that is like well known, but main decks, like you said, stuff that is the whole field because you get those really like cocky players going, "Oh yeah, you're playing that. It's not fair because you main deck all these. Like if you didn't main deck, deck that, like I would have won." It's like, yeah, but you're playing the deck that everyone's playing, so of course I'm going to main deck. And I kind yeah. of like putting those people on tilt because go, "Oh, you're playing the card that's really good against my deck." Like. Yes, of course I am. <laughs> I, so I think I might play this deck and enjoy the, the salt that will come off of everyone <laughs> playing with that. <laughs> it, is, it is delicious. I saw a pro, I can't remember which pro player said it now, um, but they said something, it was something, it was really anecdotal and, and, and quite frustrating to read, but it fits this. And it says, the way you win at Magic is to basically um, try and beat the thing that's every, that everyone's doing. Something. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't verbatim, but, but that's, that's pretty that's much what, it. That's what I like about it. Like, yeah. Again, the reason why I haven't played standard recently is because there's no crazy thing I want to play. Like I, I talk about, you know, my favourite times of playing standard. It was like, you know, villainous well for Corfaro's gift. I actually quite enjoyed recently as well. It's always the crazy stuff that people. Oh no, actually, what was the other one? It was that. Um, was it like that emerge deck or something? And then I did like something crazy oh, yeah. with, with the the Hanweir garrison and all that nonsense. It was just something that I'd, I'd made entirely myself. It was just so people just didn't know what was going on. And that gives you just such an edge over everything because it was like, I don't know how to do this because mm -hmm. all of my skill at this game is, is, is to do with being used to what people play. <laughs> okay, then. So before you lock yourself in to green-black vehicles, 
Oh. Okay. Uh, green black vehicle. Sorry, green black um, constrictor. Um, have a little look at the top thirty-two decks. So, I like the steel leaf stompy. <laughs> I mean, it, it starts like really well, and the more we scroll, the better it will get. But yeah, let's start with steel leaf, the steel leaf stompy because that's that's really cool. Um, so it's got four blossoming defense, um, a collection of green, black, and utility lands. How is this also not right? Uh, run Jade Light Ranger. This is insane. Well, it's got no, no one likes it. <laughs> green belt rampager. Elephant. Yep. So the Greenbelt Rampager, Merfolk Branch Walker, uh, Ronus the Indomitable, Scrap Heap Scrounger, Steel Leaf Champion, which is the three three green, five four, can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So um, good. Which is really good. And then the Brontodon as well. So um, in many ways playing bigger than a lot of what you're going to see from um, Red Black. So, you know, playing a Bomat Courier and then playing a Branch Walker, which is likely to be bigger. Um, well, we run Scalter, which is bigger than anything in the entire yeah. format. <laughs> um, and I'm just trying to think, right? So, if you if you've gone Greenbelt Rampage, a Heart of Kieran, turn two, crew and attack. Turn three, can we play Gilter? Is that too stupid? Um, so that's six. So that would be seven power. So that'll yeah. make him. I oh know. So it still costs six mana. So you'd need. Okay, so then if in turn three you play Ronus, you could get Gilter, you could get Galter Primal Hunger out turn four. Yes. Wait, you saying Green Greenback Rampage turn one? Oh no, he needs to come into play. He needs yeah. To, yeah. Darn, I knew there was something wrong with this. Um. Yeah, maybe not turn. Four. Could you do turn four? Lanawar Elves. Okay, Lanawar Elves. And then no, I don't think it works. Damn. Okay. okay. No, it's, it's good though. I, I like I like that this is currently a format where you can turn two play a five four with some other nonsense on it as well. It's just stupid. Oh, maybe that's how you do it. Le or Lenore, <laughs> don't want Lenore out turn two still the champion. Like is you showed someone ten years ago. It's like how is what? <laughs> yeah, their brain would have exploded. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, no, that's good. So yeah, if you did that, turn two, turn yep. So then you've got six power on board. So yeah. then you need six mana still. So then turn three, you could play another Steel Leaf Champion, nice. and nice. then you could do it turn four. Sweet. Um, although if I want to play this, I definitely need to get rid of the Heart of Crown. So uh, I need to uh, find a good Heart of Crown place. Which I don't think Heart of Crown is super good in this. It's just that it's efficient. It's, it's mostly I think you have to have Heart of Crown if you're on Planeswalkers, but because it's an Planeswalker, I think you're you're fine just using a replacement. I think you, you could certainly get away with it. I mean, it yeah. would be the other world. The evasion's really good. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> I mean, you're not short of two drops in these colours. Let's be honest. Well, yeah. I say these colours. I mean this colour. Alright, so look at the rest. I'm cool. Um, so you've got one of red aggro, which is fairly stock. Um, but black white vehicles, I thought was interesting. Fourteenth cool. place. But four history of Benelli's and two Lyras oh, plus no. four half Karan. This is so <laughs> expensive. I oh, want four Kans as well. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's just money. This deck. It looks cool though. It does look good. Again, these are sort of like the other ones. I would play these, but I will not chuck two hundred quid at standards mm -hmm. right now. No, that's fair enough. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just interested to see a vehicles deck without red. That's quite cool. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I like that the red deck on the side now. I do like that the, the red decks have inventors, uh, inventors apprentice. I've missed that guy. He hasn't been in it for like two years. Yeah, he's decent. He is decent. He, well, I don't think he was, he was last seen until like um, when Zahili Ray was still a thing. <laughs> I think that was the last time I saw him mm. in the standards. Can't think. What was the other one I saw as well down here? Black, red, black, red. Oh, I think that was... Oh, yeah. um, adventurous, adventurous Impulse. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I like it, but apparently it's seeing playing all the green stuff. Like, Is it the Traverse me, the Even World kind of thing? It's, it's, to me, it's if you ever played Hearthstone, it's just that tracking card that Hunters have that no one ever plays. It's just, oh, yeah. pay, it's just like pay one, look at another card, get a card. Like, I don't think that's very good, but apparently I'm wrong, I guess. I think people maybe just really miss um, tune with ether. Tune with ether a bit. Uh, maybe. But I mean that would work great because uh, you know 
the elephant, but oh well. Yeah. I mean... Relevant. I, I, I think it's okay, that card. But yeah, I mean, what I think the biggest issue with that is you're going to keep opening hands. Like, you could keep an opening hand based on the number of Attune with Ethers you had. Yeah, because yeah. Because Attune with Ether was a tapped land. And yeah, it's true. If you've got one forest and that, yeah, you can't, you can't be as confident with it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you a little bit. I'm not sold on it because Traverse as well was just so much more reliable and also had the cheater effect. Yeah, I like I like Traverse. I miss that card. It's good. Okay. Um. 19th <laughs> place has got Jade Light Ranger just to make you happy. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Um. 22nd place, Grixis Chain Chain Whirler. Like even to say those words just sounds so aggressive. <laughs> and then you look through it, and it's got like literally Simon a Glorybringer, Chain Whirler, Scarab God, Torrential Get, like just all of this is just so obnoxiously like, oh god, that god, oh god, that, oh no, this is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, all of this is just very much like Value Town in terms of all the cards and just very well known aggressive stuff. So it's got this um, proper land base of like what you'd see in a Grixis control desk, control yeah. deck, sorry. Um, so like all the all the dual lands to make the Grixis colours. And yeah, um it's almost like do well, you know what this reminds me of? It re- reminds me of um the Grixis decks that were floating around kind of like that weren't quite Teamer. Because you remember when then yeah. when Teamer started playing like um World of Virtuoso uh yes. not well, not Teamer, sorry, Grixis decks with World of Virtuoso and, and other yeah. bits. But everyone was kind of thinking, well, it doesn't have a tune with Ether and all mm. of the energy things, so it's not as good. Yeah. This almost seems like well now that you can't do that as reliably, this this is a pretty good it's playing all the all the efficient removal. So two are braids, harness lightnings, magma sprays, four Vrassler's contempt. Um and just really like efficient creatures mm. as well. Like Glint Sieve Siphoner give the card yeah. advantage, Glory Bringer is card advantage, Chain Whirler is card advantage, the Scar of God, Torrential Gear Holt, World of Virtuoso. Like everything in this deck um, can give you a two for one, like all creature wise, in mm. some in some in some capacity. Um, it's got another another white black vehicles deck, which is interesting. Um, I've skipped ahead to white blue gift in twenty ninth place. Like okay. this guy, this guy seems to have been just asleep for six months and just not really cared. He's just kind of woke up. Going, well, I've got a God Fearer's gift. Deck. I'm really good at it. Let's just rock up to the tournament, and he's done quite well. <laughs> like, there's, there's no additions whatsoever. I don't think. Uh, no, there's nothing yeah. from the set. This is great. I like it. It's just gone like, no, this is fine. I don't, I'm not going to change. I've seen people add red. I'm, I've got nothing to do with that. Stay away. Still works. <laughs> yeah, it seems fine. Like again, there's li- no, there's literally nothing. Great. This is, this is what I find amusing about um about magic sometimes is a deck. I think this this deck, like this blue white gift deck, is a perfect mm-hmm. example of that deck didn't just suddenly stop being able to to win a game. Like the deck's fine. Um, yeah. it's just that. You look at the rest of this top thirty-two. Like every other list is red black vehicles. Um, yeah. There's quite a lot in this top thirty-two. Yeah. Probably at least half, if not more. I'm not going to count them. But um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? How like you look at. It, I think naturally you kind of look to the new things to do, and thought actually, yeah, like this blue white deck still still there. If you've got it, there's still no harm in playing it. This guy did all right with it. I'm not sure about thirty-second place, but I've seen this uh, about a little bit. Quirks energy. I'm not really sure if you can call yourself quick synergy if you've only got like two ways of making. I oh, know you've got harness lightning, so like three ways of making energy minus either hubs, I guess. Mm. Like again, like you said, you kind of need another card like a human beast that's going to give you energy straight away. Yeah. Stuff like that, and, and if you lose the cards that you just played, then you've got no real energy making. Um, I don't know. Mm. It's a we- I-, I find these decks really weird because um, this well, th- first of all, this is very similar to the Grixis Chain Whirler. Um, except yeah. it's gone for a couple more controlly cards like um, Supreme Will and Syncopates. Um, yeah. I think the triple red is very, very greedy um, in the <laughs> other deck, um, especially when you're playing the double black Vraska's Contempt, double blue Torrential Gear Hulk. Um, that could go wrong. But anyway, um, this this deck is this Grixis Energy deck. Thirty second. I think there's a, I, I personally think there's a lot of conflicting cards here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but I'll give you an example, like, so if you're playing against a normal energy deck, let's say team energy, like, it didn't really matter 
what stage in the game they were. They always had like more energy than the, the card that you've just played gives you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like Harness Lightning, you know, Harness Lightning for five or six was just like something you had to almost take into consideration. Well, for me, I look at this word uh, Well of Virtuoso or Harness, Harness Lightning, and I kind of read it as like comes into play, makes a doctor. Like it's not like you can keep on making doctors where with, with Teamer when they play the Virtuoso, you're like, oh, I have to kill that now before they get more energy. Yeah. Like this deck has no way of making energy reliably unless you have a Gleam Sleep Siphoner. So for me, I don't think these energy cards are a continual threat. It's more just you will get one of the things it tells you to, and maybe if you're lucky, you'll get some slightly more. I don't think that's good enough. No, that is a very, very good point, um, especially when you consider uh, <laughs> the Grixis Chain Worder deck is playing a copy of Glimmer of Genius. Yeah. But the Grixis Energy deck is yeah. playing no Where's copies. That? It's like Where's what? That? Why? It's not. That's not good enough, really, is it? No. I mean, it's yeah. It's you're absolutely right. It's not an energy deck, really. Um, yeah. It's, it's just. It's just enters play. You make at least one doctor, maybe more. Yeah. <laughs> but probably not. I, I think the reality is um, the gr- the good energy decks um, use cards that have been banned. Um, <laughs> yeah. and and there's a reason why they were banned, and that's that's that really. Um, I don't think really you've got enough pieces to make a reliably powerful. Because you you can do the um the three artifacts that work off each other. You can do that whole thing, and you can do you can do something. Uh, the mana the mana guy woman. Yeah, she's still she's, good. Also. She's good. Yeah. She is good, um, but I mean, we're not even we're not even seeing anything that even resembles Teamer in these these nah. upper bits. So um, hey ho, but yeah, I mean that that was the the top eight and the top thirty two, um, which is pretty good. Um, but the other thing we wanted to to chat about was um, going about building a cube because I know Grant, you mentioned quite a bit about cubes, and it got me to thinking. Um, and I've always, it's one thing I've always kind of in the back of my mind would be nice to have my own cube, yeah. but I've, I've, it, I, I think it's a bit of a minefield like where to start. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure I could Google how to make a cube, and <laughs> I could get a document that says, "Oh, you need X amount of this, X amount of that, whatever." But I, we're just, just kind of wondering what would be uh, if someone was saying to you, "Grant, I want to build a cube. How do I?" And I don't mean one that you go on a list, you go on a website like the Star Wars one or the Pokemon. Yeah. One. Sure. Someone's done all that. I mean, they want to build a cube using cards that are mm. real. Um, how do you go about that whole process? Well, as you mentioned, like um, I'll leave out uh, the, the custom ones because I've got Star Wars, like you said. I've got the Pokemon one, as I've mentioned before, and there's another one which I can't remember if I mentioned last time, which was I've only recently just printed out, which I need to cut out, uh, which is called uh, Netropolis, but it's like a cyberpunk themed one, um, yep. which is really really interesting. Um, but again, this is all custom, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but generally speaking, for the cubes I have built, it's been based around a set. So mm-hmm. I've done a conspiracy one. I've done a uh, finishing off a conspiracy take the crown or whatever it's called one. Um, and then I'm uh, halfway through doing an, un- an unstable one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now there was a there was a good um, I think it was a Channel Fireball one actually. It might have been an Energy Golf one though. Uh, but- or both, um, but it was about building an unstable cube because obviously uh, you could do uncubes before, but they weren't. They didn't really have enough sort of going through them for it to um, be well, like enjoyable. Like again, it, those cards are kind of silly, but you need to have some kind of playability factor running through it for it to just not be mindless, just nonsense. That makes sense. Um, oh, very quickly as well, Grant. Just in case yeah. anyone who might not be aware what a cube is. Yeah. How would you very quickly oh, sure. just define okay, so I, I, I forgot, I assumed that people would know that. I should have said that first. Yeah, so I believe um, the term, I did I did look up this about two or three years ago because someone mentioned cube. I was like, why is, it, why is it called cube? I believe it's called cube because the minimum you need um, is 360 cards because that is, if I've done my maths correctly, that is, um, uh, what is it? It's 8 times 3 times 15, I think. Whatever it is to have the bare minimum number of cards to draft for eight people, basically. Yeah. That number equals 360. Um, so for a for a for you to build a cube that will um, be playable by up to eight people, you have to have at least 360 cards. Yep. 
which um, I believe um, is something to do with cubes. And that's why it's called cubes. No, that's cool. um, there is probably more to that. Um, and this is for drafting yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you need to first thing you need to do is make sure that whatever you're trying to build will have at least 360 cards in. So if you're just going like, oh, I'll do one, one of each card from a certain set, uh, that's not really going to work. Um, and most of the cubes I have seen, um, people will go above that number, not um, not really to so they can go up to more people. Although potentially, of course, that could be a thing. You go, okay, let's build a cube for sixteen people. Um, you know, that's not really going to be. You're not really going to get sixteen people to play very often. <clears throat> but I think the reason they do it is because, of course, if you think about how a normal booster pack works, um, say if you open again like a box of boosters, um, you're going to get probably over maybe ten or something of each uh, of some commons, aren't you? Just because commons are by definition common. And you know you could open a, a box of Kaladesh or um, uh, was it Ether Revolt, whatever Fatal Push is from, and you probably you probably won't get like even three, let alone a playset of them. Yeah. Um, just because again, although they are uncommon, so you know they're ultimately um, mostly worth less than rares. Um, you can't really rely on getting those. So by having a, a cube that's over three hundred sixty cards, um, you can kind of. Uh, what's the word, kind of like emulate that a bit better. Yep. So rather than say having what I've done for a few of mine, rather than say doing like three of every common, two of every uncommon, one of every rare, that's cool because you've got a small number of cards and that's that's fine. And it works very well for like a custom set where no one's really used to getting a certain number of each card. But really what you want to be doing, I think the was the optimum number, I think it was 6311, I think was the ultimate ones. Oh, right. so you, or I think one of them did like eight Eight, three, one, one. So what I mean is six or eight copies of a common, then three of every uncommon, one of every rare, and one of every mythic. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you do, if you do that kind of calculation for any any set, so imagine like a set's got two hundred fifty cards in it on average. Um, if you work out how many commons it's got, uncommons, and times it by those numbers, you come out normally about six hundred or seven hundred. Um, so if you want to make a cube that is going to be, say, if you wanted to do um, Ixalan as a cube. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got to bear in mind that if you want to make it representative, that that, that cube is going to be 700 or 800 cards. Yeah. Um, and although it's quite cool, these custom sets I've done where I've just printed them off at work, haven't had to pay money for them, um, you do end up paying about 30 quid in, in just leads <laughs> yeah. or boxes. So it's, it's cool when you go, like, oh, this is fine, it's just loads of comments and comments, and they're not going to cost very much money, but you've got to think about where you're going to store it yep. in sleeves. You've got to also um, remember to sleeve up like about 200 at least basic lands. Because, uh, of course, you can't just run basic lands in whatever sleeves you want because you're going to have to use the same sleeves as yeah. the one you've built your cube in. Um, so there's a few kind of, I don't know, just admin stuff. Um, but those are those are the sort of main uh, sort of, I don't know, housekeeping type stuff. Yeah. But that's good to think about because I think that's it's an easy thing to, to, to forget the whole storage thing because Sonny... Um, Brought his cube along to a GP once, <laughs> and it's just massive box. And I was like, Jesus, he's lugging yep. that around. And I started yeah. thinking, yeah, and this was like foiled out expeditions. Oh yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. like, I wouldn't want that to leave the house. No, um, exactly. But but yeah, you got to, you got to find somewhere to put it. Um, and the, I think the basic lands is a good one. That's an easy one to forget because I've I've been before where you go even just like doing a draft where it isn't a cube, and you go around people's houses or whatever, and they're like. So where's the lands? And then you, <laughs> and then 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 you see that moment where the the host it suddenly dawns on them. <laughs> oh, I don't have any basic lands apart from the the handful in my other decks. Um, let's, let's unsleeve these expedition things to use the same sleeves. <laughs> yeah. to play this. yeah, it's just not good. Is it? <laughs> no. um, so yeah, that, that's a good one. And okay, so bearing all that in mind, then so let's say you didn't want to go with it because I think that's a really good formula for. Um, emulating a set, creating yeah. like um, an Ixalan or an Aether Revolt um, yeah. draft experience. Um, and that, that's that's quite simple. Once you've got those numbers down, like 8311 exactly, yeah. or 6311, however you want to do it, um, that's quite good. Then you just, just yeah. put in the work in to, get, to attain the cards. But what yeah. about building your own cube if you wanted to um, not go along the set, uh, the, uh, the theme of a the set, but you wanted to have... Because you see where people, like in Sunny's one, for example... He wanted yeah, exactly. to use all the expeditions, have some real good power level um, in there. Basically, um, have the showcase of this draft experience where you're getting to draft and play with really powerful cards. Yeah, so um, as you said, like um, the ones I've done have either been custom sets or real sets. And the reason I've done that, um, and like I said, I've done you know 
what, a three, two, one kind of idea with conspiracy and I'm, I'm going to do the same for Unstable. And that's fine for me because although it's kind of like a lazy, let's just get a set. The thing is with conspiracy, particularly Unstable, of course, is you can mix them together quite easily. Yeah. Uh, so I've kind of just got not so much a cube, but more just like a selection of cards I can rely on to, to do what I like with. Um, in terms of doing like an actual custom cube, again, like you said, the, the ones I think you come across most are just people not showing off, but generally like it's just really powerful cards or, you know, I'll collect all of these foils or all of these promos or whatever. And I think that's fine. And I remember, I think I have played not too often actually, um, but out of custom cubes that I have played, it's been it's been fun because you get your first boost back and you go, oh cool, like, you know, there's two swords in here, the Jason Wine Sculptor, all that. And it's I don't think it's great because although it's fun seeing all these crazy cards in your hand, to me that doesn't really feel like, like drafting because... Although it gives you a really tough decision, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right for me. Right to me, if that makes sense. No, that, um, I can appreciate that. Um, I've done a couple of cubes um, online, and I did uh, a few that my, my friends have yeah. done. And I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, it's very different. It's not no. what I find actually can be quite difficult. And this isn't to put people off playing a cube. Is you inadvertently get um, people that regularly do it or the person who owns the cube they get the cube yeah they know that yeah. um if they see card x okay i'm going to take that because card y is coming around and that's a broken exactly combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um i mean a really obvious answer um thing would be like um uh the infinite combo with that uh, what's it called um uh, i can't even remember the card names now in World Wake, um, Splinter Twin. So if you see Splinter Twin, oh, sure, yeah. then you pick it because then when um, Pestermite comes around, you're yeah. going to get hooked up. That sort of thing. Um, so yeah, not... I think I think there's a there's a few things you take take into account here. I think like um, certainly what I'm doing for my custom cubes is I make sure that everyone knows what's in the in the in the the set or of course for the cube what's in the cube. And I think it's a real dick move if you go like oh. Um, Oh, I've got this blister in. Is is pest? You know, is um, is pestmite or is whatever in the set? And the host's like, oh, I don't know, maybe kind of thing. Like, Ugh. I think you need to have a list of what's in it so that people know what they need to look out for. Yeah. And uh, another thing I was going to say, and I think the best the best analogy I can think of, which may be really useful for some people, but will go over heads of loads of others, is to me it's a bit like running a D and D Dungeons and Dragons encounter. Like you you've built a cube, so you're like you're the dungeon master, you built the cube, and you've got all these different cards you can play with. Now, what you don't want to do is, say if you build... I'm trying to think of, if I did if I did do a custom cube, what I would do. And I really like tribal stuff. Yeah. So let's say I did a set which was kind of like a mixture of, like, mostly Lorwyn and, you know, uh, Eventide and stuff, but then also, like, more recent Merfolk and Goblins and stuff and do that. Yeah. What I wouldn't want to do is have, say, a tribe for each colour, and then basically, if you don't want to do a tribal thing, you're just going to lose all the time. Yeah. You don't want to you don't want to railroad people into doing what you think they should do. Yeah. So again, like a D and D encounter, you want to give people choice, um, but also you need to have it. You need to be structured at the same time as well. So um, again, like if anyone's drafted uh, any of the like Eternal Masters or Vintage Master sets, like there are archetypes that, that emerge, and I think that's inevitable. But you you definitely don't want to build a cube where there's only like say three or four or, or even five decks. I think you need to make sure that whatever you're designing will be flexible and customizable enough and that you are transparent about it at the beginning so the players can try and build their own archetype before they get started, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. So I, I can totally imagine how if you go, right, I'm going to go tribal, and, and you go, right, okay, we've got elves, goblins, all the rest of it. Um, yeah. But actually, I can... I, you've put enough creatures in there that if you just want to build... So elves and goblins in red and green, you just build a red-green stompy deck. That isn't necessarily yeah. just elves or goblins. Whereas... Yeah. Um, or you can have like, like blue white blinky kind of effects that yeah, isn't yeah, just yeah. like spirits or whatever. Um, so you've got different avenues, but also you could even it could even be like ways of enhancing the, the tribal decks as well themselves. Like mm. it actually just adds more to right. I'm going to put all the best elves in a in a cube, and that's what that's going to be. Um, yeah, I've seen actually um, people that go to really really big extremes with it. Well, they'll, they'll do like um, a zombie cube where it's not it's not just tribal it's like every creature types a zombie so in some ways it will always be zombie tribal but like it's yeah, just zombie yeah, yeah. but that's that's but that's that's obviously like the theme of the cube which is quite it's quite fun 
Um, I think, um, to me, again, I haven't really thought about it in much depth because, again, I tend to go off, uh, like I said, like custom sets or, or sets I want to be flexible with. And the, the thing is, um, I've kind of uh, almost seen it from the other side in terms of if you, if you look at the custom sets that people build, like, again, I've, I've looked at and built three, um, and I can definitely tell you that the Star Wars one is the better one. Um, you, you can see what is necessary to make your own set um, and you need to have like a certain amount of removal, you need to have a certain amount of multicolor cards, you need to have a certain amount of, um, you know, fun cards, but they're not too many and that kind of thing. And I think it's almost like um, if you think about how you draft normally, um, you know, the whole, is it bread thing, the whole bombs, removal, evasion, yep. advantage of dudes or whatever it is. <laughs> um, you almost need to do that from like, an, from like a reverse engineering kind of point of view in that you go, okay, what does, what does this whole cube need? Like, say if you go, okay, it's going to be mostly these colours, but you've only got removal in black or you've only got removal in red, that's not really good enough. So I think you need to look at the cube as a whole. Yeah. And whatever the theme is, make sure that it's at least got these sort of basic, like, uh, like amenities, I suppose, or utilities, if that, if that sort of makes sense. Yeah, that's 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 a really good point, actually. Um, making sure that um, each colour is viable would definitely require that kind of thought. Um, yeah. Again, I'm using another extreme example that I've, again, sort of heard about anecdotally was this one person would, had this real thing for doing like mono color cubes. Sure. And the mono green one um, was just weird because there's very little. This was at a time before we started to see a lot of the fight cards coming in. So um, boring. So you couldn't kill anything. And he said, right. there's this one card that exists, which is like one green does one damage to something or shoot uh, Hornet Sting or something. Hornet Sting, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he said, like, that was the first pickable card. <laughs> <laughs> because there's That's no no that. removal in that in that cube, um, so you oh. as as much fun as it might be um, at face value to be like, oh, I wouldn't mind drafting that for a laugh. Actually, when you start to build a deck, um, and then you realise these little things it can be a problem. I think um, yeah, yeah, you, you definitely whatever you're planning, you definitely need to make sure that you've got like the basics of whatever what any set would have, um, you know this removal or whatever but i think you really want to think about it broadly because again if you go like oh i want this color or this creature type i think that's kind of it's not going to end well because just almost by you know narrowing yourself that that much it's just not going to ever get to the standards of a cube that, that is a bit wider just because you're, you're limiting yourself so much um but i think you need to think like broadly like again i said like tribal but across you know say 10 years or whatever if you want to do powerful cards that's that's good but again, you don't just go because if you were to list off all the most expensive and powerful cards, they are going to be of similar colours or similar types. Like you're not going to get many like really expensive single target removal spells, are you? No, uh, no. If you get what I mean. So I think it's fine if you want to do a really powerful cube, but you need to make sure that it's not all of that. That it does have everything else as well. So it doesn't really matter what your theme is. That's fine if you want to go like a, I don't know, uh, like a nature theme or like you could do like an art theme if you wanted to. That's cool. Or like mostly say you know. Um, female artists for magic kind of thing that'd be quite cool as a cube mm. um, but you need to make sure that it's not just all that because then you go oh you know Teresa Nielsen never, never I don't know painted any removal unfortunately we have to stick to it like again you need to think about the, the sort of um, viability of the cube overall rather than just what you um, just very much sort of obsessively want to stick to <laughs> yeah no absolutely and I think that's the key thing about about um, magic as well is your idea of fun is not the same as Exactly. the other seven people's idea of fun um this, this is why i like the custom cubes because the thing is although i do like specific cards and certain types i don't very much know that i'm in the minority there what i'm looking forward to most when i play this star wars cube or pokemon cube or the, this new one as well is i want to see what people do with it because i'm i'm sure that i'm not going to come out top even though i'm the one that's looked at the cards and cut them out someone's going to get more creative than me and i'm looking forward to seeing that that creativity that someone comes up with yeah. so i think you definitely need a cube where people can be creative otherwise they're going to get bored absolutely yeah because you want people to be at the end of it saying, "Oh, I can't, I can't wait to be playing that cube again." Or let's, let's just, yeah, right, let's, exactly. let's, let's break it down and do it again, rather than yeah, exactly. Oh, I want to do this color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what, that's what you want to hear. Yeah, not oh, I solved that cube. I feel like yeah. I've, I've learned everything there is to know about that. <laughs> Which, like you said, if you've got like a zombie cube, you know, you're not going to play it and go like, "Yeah, let's do that again," but with different zombies. Like again, mm -hmm. it's not really, there's not really much to it, is there? Just, let's do different zombies this time. <laughs> no. Um, but that's how you can, again, kind of going back to the tribal, you just maybe think of um, the zombie thing. Is it's, it's being as broad as possible to try and 
get as much creativity in there as well. So like this, the tribal thing, you can actually create um, a lot of crossover between creature types. So like you, so like yes. you can have there are zombie elves, for example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there yeah, aren't yeah. many of them, but you can you've got cards there in that exist that can be will pull people in um, yeah. to to a certain archetype or. It might come around late because people aren't drafting it, but the one zombie person is like, "Oh my god, I got this zombie elf! Like that's that's amazing. I'm gonna that, that's gonna make this deck even even more interesting now." Um, so you've got got to think of ways to kind of open up more avenues, definitely, than um, just like I'm gonna create this. Unless I suppose it comes down to your play group as well. Like, oh yeah, definitely. A group definitely. of people that that want to do the mono green cube, then then have at it. <laughs> But it's um, I mean, this is more of a personal thing, but I kind of like as well being, you, you know, you make sure you've got all the basics, you make sure you put your own spin on, you make sure you haven't been too um, sort of rigid about it. But then I kind of like adding a few little bits in as well. You, you get to the end of the cube, you've got like a space for maybe ten cards, or maybe I'll just go over what I said just to add in a few cards. And um, I saw this in particular with um, I think it's the Pokemon cube. I've there's one card and it's kind of like a they've got like a purple symbol and it's kind of like an optional if you want to be kind of like a joke kind of card. Um, and what I like doing with with sets, particularly cubes I've got, is you <laughs> you can tempt players with doing something really greedy. Oh. And I really like it when players will go like, no, I want to do this. And sometimes it goes fantastic and it's it's really enjoyable. Or sometimes they'll mess up like a whole pack just picking just to go around this card. <laughs> so if you if you are doing say I don't know a set or a theme or whatever i really like putting in the kind of like a maze zen kind of card uh yeah. not probably that because that's really specific but like a, a win the game card or uh you know some sort of infinite combo but that requires like three or four cards or something and be really transparent about it go like oh yeah if you pick that you know you might get this and i kind of like that sort of chaotic you know some player might get there but most of the time they'll just get really punished for it and i kind of like them putting in not not too much again but just like maybe one percent of the cube is just some really uh tempting um <laughs> thing to build maze's end is a cruel thing to put in a cube i don't think i'd ever do that but it just as an example like a like a win the game I, well, think maybe, I, um, I think i might have to if i ever make a cube i i, I think i would just yeah. have to do that now because <laughs> someone's gonna take it I mean, like, uh, I don't know, just, just like a normal one, like, uh, maybe, is it Helix Pinnacle, the, the pay, put 100 mana into it, win the game, that kind of thing, or Dark Steel Reactor, or some, some yeah. win the game card. But put, that, just... put the Helix Pinnacle in, because then the person who first picks it, they're like, they're, 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 well, if this is in the cube, there's going to be a way to make it. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, yeah. and don't put that way to make it for the manner. <laughs> just, but just... yeah, but don't, but don't be, a, like I said, like, don't be a dick about it. Do you do have everything transparent? But maybe sort of go like, oh, if they ask, like, oh, is the mana fix? And they're like, yeah, but then maybe don't tell them how much or something. You know, kind of be be honest, but also kind of definitely punish them for being a bit too greedy about stuff. <laughs> uh, what what you should do um, is, what you, do, you should definitely do what you're saying, because what you're saying is sensible and the correct thing to do. But what would be really funny is if you just, you built a cube that consisted of as many halves of a combo as you possibly could. Oh, that's just that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like a, just a, the unsatisfying <laughs> cube. <laughs> so we, we, you get everyone down to have the opposite of fun, basically. Be really... <laughs> <laughs> you, if they open their pack, and they see um, Umazawa's jit. They're like, oh, I open this, and someone's like, oh, I got Umazawa's jit as well. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. There's like like four in this cube. It's like, oh, that's broken. Yeah, but there's no creatures in the set. <laughs> 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 that would be great. <laughs> oh, could you actually? Could you make a creatureless cube that actually worked? See, this is what I like. This is a theme I quite like. Now, again, you'd have to really, really like have almost half the cube being just support to be able to let you do that. Um, mm. But I like that idea. Stuff like that, I really like. I think, yeah, challenges. As long as again, as long as you make sure before you start that you can you can have everything that makes a cube, you know, balanced. And you don't need creatures for it to be balanced. Just have the same experience. And I think that would be a really cool cube to build around. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose the obvious the obvious thing would be um, a lot of the cards that make tokens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or artifacts that turn into creatures or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. that's cool. I like that. Idea. Um, also, I wanted to mention as well, uh, mostly because I'm used to doing custom stuff, but because um, it's your cube, you can do whatever you want. With it. So, like I said, say if you were doing, um, you know, like I said, like a, an artistic themed one, like a like I said, like a female artist one. Um, it, it's your cube. These these cards are never going to be 
in a tournament because they're part of a queue. If you wanted to customise them, so let's say if you didn't have any removal spells, but you got, I don't know, you did it on your computer or something and printed out some proxies, or of course you've got someone to do an edit for you, you can do that. So again, mm. if you're using tokens, you can use custom tokens. If you wanted to use lands, you can do custom lands, like the Star Wars keyword. Um, the guy has got these full art lands using artwork from some of the Star Wars, um, like books and whatever. Um, and again, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, their lands with bit, little bits of paper from them, but it's part of a cube. It doesn't have to be tournament legal. Do what you like with it. Yeah. So again, if you wanted to do, um, say, a white bordered one, or uh, again, you you liked artwork from a particular person, or you know, particular colours or whatever, you know, you could do that if you wanted to, because again, it doesn't have to be. Uh, official and if you want to change cards however you want you can do that yeah oh and also just from again from like an admin point of view if you're going to have a cube with stuff that makes tokens make sure you do have tokens with you because that's just annoying otherwise yeah yeah, yeah. So, sounds obvious but but yeah definitely i've got i could, I could probably do this because i've got tons of tokens in boxes like yeah mainly angel tokens i don't know why Mine are mostly Soprolings, but then I was mad for Soprolings when I just played casually and got like loads of custom ones made. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so, is there anything, any other nuggets of wisdom you can think of regarding cubes? Um, I think, again, it's, it's kind of a bit, um, a bit skewed because, of, because of, uh, like I said, I, I mostly prefer custom stuff. I'm just looking at the spreadsheets I've got for um, like color combinations and how many copies I've got and stuff. And like I said, if people haven't already look at the Star Wars The Gathering website because the, the cube this guy's built is just amazing. Um, but, like, he's got, say, for instance, like, 10 of every white, 10 of every... Not number-wise, I mean uh, different cards. Uh, like, 10 of every white, 10 of every blue, whatever, for the colours. And then maybe, like, five multicoloured ones. And then for uncommons, he's got, like, the same sort of numbers but then slightly more multicoloured because it's fine having more multicoloured cards because they're not going to be as frequent. Hmm. And then for rares, like, they're mostly multicoloured. And, again, it's to kind of pull people in different directions. And normally yeah. it's like a flavour kind of point of view, so you know, uh, Boba Fett's going to be kind of junk colours or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, also it's good because it pulls people in different directions. And I think um, when you are building a cube, you don't have to have uh, you know a balanced selection of colours, um, or even have any multicoloured stuff in at all. But I think if you are building a cube, you, def you definitely need to make sure that whatever colour combination you go down, it's not going to get too competitive or too like just nothing left, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and like the Metropolis set, the, the last custom one I'm doing, um, there's maybe like only about 10 multicolor cards. I think that is a bit of a waste. And to be honest, what I might do is design some of my own to, to put into the cube because I like multicolor cards. Um, but that's not necessarily meaning it's a, it's a bad set. Um, and conversely, like um, if you are building a cube with lots of multicolor cards in, you need to make sure that your land base is up to scratch for that. So even if it kind of um, again, like maybe breaks the theme of the set, you definitely need to make sure that you have enough um, mana fixing or, or multicolor lands that fit into that. Like, again, say if you were doing, uh, I mean, what you, you were saying, like a, um, I don't know, let's say the art set. Say if you were doing like a particular art theme, I think you still need to make sure that you have non-basic lands in there even if you couldn't find any of the right artwork and make sure you like, change the artwork for it or something because mm. otherwise it's just not going to be an enjoyable experience, particularly if the cube is... is like almost everyone's building like tricolor decks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which makes total um, sense. What else? No, I think that's that's mostly it. I think. Um, oh, one thing that um, I've sort of experimented with a few ones is think about how you want to design your boost packs. Because again, if people are building power cubes, like it doesn't matter. It's just fifty cards. Just, that's the end of it. But if you're building custom sets or if you're building. Um, a selection of cards but it's kind of mimicking a set if that makes sense yeah um you want to think about are you going to do uh like one rare three uncommons eight commons whatever or are you going to do maybe one rare one mythic or you're going to have you're going to have um what i've done for my star wars one is the last card's always a non-basic land because it's really heavy um with multicolored stuff it makes sure that everyone will have access to multicolored lands yeah um, some of them are rare some of them are common some of them are uncommon so it doesn't you know it's not like they're super powerful and will encourage people to first pick lands but it kind of gives you a bit more balance so you might want to think about how you um how you want to randomize these boost packs if you're going to do them truly random if you're going to keep to the rarities or if you're going to do like i do and literally um manipulate those packs so they always have one of a certain card type maybe in them now that makes sense i, I like i like the idea of having a little extra bit of land in there as well because 
it gives it gives people a bit of a leg up into yeah being able to play that sweet multicolored rare that they might have got. Um, you can even do you can even do stuff like um, you know mimicking like masterpieces and stuff. So if you do a set, you can always just do like a one off, and you could obviously you can use masterpieces if you have them, um, but you don't have to. You could just do like a one off of some crazy card that is really good and maybe maybe not like it was our jit good, but like something really uh, niche that someone might open. And go, oh, cool! Like it's a foil, you know, whatever. And um, again, that kind of adds a bit more excitement to the pack a bit, like if you were opening it for real. Because again, if if people have played this cube lots. And it's very predictable, particularly if it's quite a small cube, so it's quite close to that 360 number. Everyone kind of knows what's coming, but if it's quite a big cube and you add, like I said, like a really random combo or a really random, you know, foil card, obviously the foil doesn't matter, but it just makes it more I don't know, exciting or realistic. I think that makes um, a cube a bit more, um, yeah, a bit more just realistic, a bit more exciting, I think. Yeah, totally, totally. And also, also with that, you can, um, particularly if you find yourself uh, playing a cube a lot, there's nothing that says you ha- you can't change your cube. You could always just go like, oh, it's the end of the set. I'm going to take out these 20 cards and add new ones in. Um, you know, and you can always change your cube if it doesn't work. You- you're not stuck to how you've designed it. You can change it however you want, really. Yeah, I, th- I think that's I think that's probably for, um, if if you were getting into doing cube as well, that's probably quite quite a good thing about them that keeps you interested. The fact that yeah. you can then just be like, okay, maybe that didn't work, but mm. That's not a reason to just throw it in the trash. You just go, I'll just change it up. Because I, I imagine, like, say if anyone, I'm not sure those people have done it, say people have done, like, an artifact cube or something like along those lines. The moment Kaladesh came out, they would have instantly taken about 20 or 30 cards out to put into vehicles because that's just amazing. You know, that's revolutionary for kind of like the whole artifact concept. Hmm. So I think, again, say if you're like me, where you're trying to not spend as much money on the on the card game, but you still want to keep, you know, you want to still want to keep an eye out on new releases because they're quite exciting. I like the idea of say someone who's never who hasn't bought a boost pack for years, but has got this this really well balanced kit. But the next time a set comes out, his contribution is just oh I like that card, I like that card. I'll spend you know five quid, put those cards in, and that's his excitement out of that set. Although it's quite limited, you know it means that you can still keep up to date with with a set, yep. but in your own sort of way, which I quite like as a you know like a budget way of enjoying the game. Absolutely. Okay. Um, this is really good, Grant. Um, Cheers. Some really good, some really good stuff there. Um, I was quite impressed uh, with how much we got out of that that one little topic. Yeah, it's it's not something I've really talked about to be honest. Because no. again, like I said, it's mostly custom stuff I've done. But it's um, like I said, I've kind of learned a lot from looking at it from the other side. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's so, it's nice yeah. to be able to talk about it properly because. It's stuff you've mentioned, but then it's kind of like it's hard when we're doing these things because you think I don't always want to go yeah. off on that tangent because then yeah, yeah, yeah. it eats into a lot of the show. But obviously, it's a great topic, um, so mm. you know it's nice to talk about. It. Yeah. Right. Cool. Well, look, I am very aware that um, my wife will be home very soon, so um, I don't want us to to be caught <laughs> together. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, I think we're we're good to call it there. Um, but no, th- thanks again for that. That, that, that was awesome. No worries. Um, thank you for um, showing me a deck and sander that I actually want to play. <laughs> good. <laughs> cool. Right. Uh, I will see you soon. Take care, buddy. Take care. Bye. Bye.